um, you, you obviously address, you know, primary and secondary education as well as higher education as much of our conversation has. I think you, you appropriately know this notion of topping up and, you know, the, the reality and the importance of lifelong learning. And I'm curious if you've thought much about that. Certainly you could, I think, make an argument that people ought to be topping up on global literacy in a changing world and uh, higher education can and does play a role in that. Uh, your thoughts perhaps about how the council may do that and maybe how higher education could also be involved in that. Yeah, no, thanks for asking. Um, look, just think about it. The average student leaves a college or university in his or her early 20s. Given life spans and safety nets and the rest, they're probably looking at close to a 50 year run after that. Inconceivable, I don't care how good the education is, inconceivable that it will be adequate for the next 50 years, given among other things, new technologies and a zillion other things. Uh, any more than what we received 50 years ago was adequate today. Now, some things have lasting and value, critical thinking, you know, reading, still the ability to read, the ability to count, I get it. Uh, but much of the content though is clearly needs to be um, supplemented uh, or, or uh, more. So I would just assume, again, you know, the topping off model, driving down the highway of life, if the average person's gonna have what, 15, 20, 25 jobs in the course of their careers, well, that's 15 or 20 or 25 educating and training opportunities. And indeed, uh, just to take a step back beyond even higher education, I think mid-career training and education are going to be fundamental. Indeed, given the future of work, the, the accelerating pace of technological innovation and productivity changes, uh, we're going to need a, a workforce that can keep up with it. And one of the biggest problems now is the lag between the requirements and the jobs and the skill sets of the workers. So reskilling is going to become a... Uh, I think a, a permanent feature and whichever societies are better at reskilling will both have greater social uh, order and harmony or whatever word you want to use, less inequality, but will also be comparatively better off against other uh, countries. So I, I just think this is now a permanent partner. If I were in the university business or college business, I'd be thinking harder. I think, again, there's enormous opportunity here. That one thing, so maybe your principal focus is getting people at the, you know, the start, if you will, the 18 to 22 age, plus or minus. But then how do you structure so over the next 50 years, they are regular, they, they pull into your intellectual gas station, whether it's physically or remotely, and they top off their tank. Uh, could be working with graduates, could be working with people in every can, could be working with local businesses. Because increasingly businesses have realized they're going to have to do the reskilling rather than wait for the government. Could mean working with states and cities. But I, I would basically think way more about uh, an education model that wasn't so front loaded. The four year on campus model. That was, that, I think that stays a dimension of it. Maybe it's even the lion's share, but it can't be the exclusive uh, role or function of a college or university, I think uh, that can't succeed. It's just major opportunity squandered 